In the first 10 years of this century, we have had three major crashes. In 2000 was the dot-com crash, followed by the 2006 real estate subprime crash, and then 2008, the banking crash. The question is, is this next? This is the giant crash of 1929. Every time I listen to those guys on CNBC, I call it bubble. They keep talking about the giant crash of 1929. I tell you what, let me compare to this one coming. So what's happening in America today, savers are losing. You know, most parents say that the kids go to school and save money and work hard. But in 1970, when I graduated school, a million dollars at 15% interest earned me 150,000. Now you could live on $150,000 a year back then. But in 2016, due to this thing called quantitative easing, I call it the Greenspan put, it's uh, $1 million at negative five basis points. It's going to cost a $1 million to save a $1 million. That is how deteriorated our financials have become. And this is one of the causes between the gap, and the rich, and the poor. Another thing is that fewer and fewer families are receiving middle class incomes. It's going down. Every time we shop at Walmart, we ship dollars and jobs over to China and Pakistan and all this capital. Another thing that's happening when people's incomes go down, they become dependent. Now, the U.S. government tells us that poverty has been beaten in America. Maybe poverty has been beaten, but what has increased is entitlement mentality. The attitude that the government and others should take care of, as I said, it's a moral crisis as well as a spiritual. I learned in Sundays, give and you shall receive. And too many people today think that Marx had one thing, so it was the abolition of private property. In other words, we could own nothing. So they want to take all of our private property, and it would then go to the state. And that's why when you study communism and Marxism, it's a centralized economy. It's central, it's, com it's called, in military terms, it's called command and control. It's the military. So it's a command and control economy where the government tells you everything. And uh, so that's why the Federal Reserve Bank is part of a communism. It's a central bank. And the central bank is not American. It's not a bank. And there's no reserves in it. And it's the, the Fed today, in 2021, is the third central bank. And for history, since Jefferson and those guys, they kept saying, we cannot have central banks. But because our academic system is basically Marxist, you know, most school teachers are Marxists, they just don't know it. August, August 15, 1971, we broke the agreement of the Bretton Woods Agreement, 1944. We promised the world with the dollar would be backed by gold. Going back in time, so in 1933, it was FDR, Franklin Delano Roosevelt, who everybody loves. The guy was a hardcore Marxist. He, t he made owning gold illegal. And so, 44, so 1933, 1944, you got to study history, Bretton Woods, 71, Nixon screws the world. But this is the thing that happened that really screwed my generation of boomers. The 401k was born in 1974. So today you have my generation the boomers, they're hanging on by a thread due to historical events coming in. So now the stock market is at an all-time high. It's nuts. And the reason it's all-time high is because our CEOs are borrowing money from the Treasury to repurchase their own stocks. So we don't have a real economy. We don't have a real stock market. And the U.S., the Fed is greatly in debt. The U.S. is greatly in debt. So your generation is far more aware, but my generation, my concern is the market is going to come down, stock market, bond market, real estate market. And my generation is not prepared for it because they're not as turned on or aware as much of your generation is. Like, you know, like it's, it's such a paradox of what's going on. Yeah, but you can see it if you're aware. So the thing that happened in 74 was, was very, very important. Back in 1950s, when I was a real little kid, I was working with my rich dad, who was my best friend's father. He had executives at his company that played the stock market. So this is the 50s and the 60s. And my rich dad said, anybody who's in the stock market's a gambler. And so I don't do business with gamblers. And I still remember that. So when I talk, a lot of my friends are not in the stock market. So this is the point. Back in the 50s and the 60s, prior to 71, when they put the dollar off the gold standard, you could save dollars because they weren't printing. It was backed by gold. You see, 1944 to 71, you have to look at history. It was really smart to be a saver of dollars. It was also smart. My rich dad didn't really save money. He, he, he built projects. He, was a, you know, he, built, he built big projects. Um, but he bought bonds. 
So the smart money back in the 50s and the 60s was in bonds and savings because they didn't print money. If you can get your head around that one, and so today we're printing $120 billion a month in the U.S. Lenin said if you want to destroy the economy, you want to destroy capitalism, you botch the currency. So in 1971, just before I went to Vietnam, Nixon took the dollar off the gold standard. But they don't teach you. see, our system is communist. And I hate to say that because I'm a Marine, went to Vietnam twice. I fought for this country into military school. And today they're talking about reparations. But what history doesn't tell you is that Hitler rose to power on reparations. Why don't they teach us that stuff? So that's why I learned at military school. If you study Marx, Lenin, Hitler, and Mao, you'll see it all over the school. That's what today's postmodernist education and postmodernist education actually started in 1930. When out of the Frankfurt School in Germany, they moved over to Columbia University. And Columbia University is the headquarters for Marxists, but they don't tell you. That. And so the Teachers College at Columbia University is where the Frankfurt School set up in 1930. Marx, look at Obamacare. It was Stalin who said, medicine is the archstone of socialism, socialized medicine. And education fits into that same category. Before we continue, help us clicking that YouTube like button and subscribe now to our channel. This shows the algorithm that you valued this information. And it helps us spread that message. Sharing is caring. And now, let's continue. Do you want to know one thing about crypto? I made over 3000% in profit in a few weeks. Fact is, the traditional financial system, the traditional money system makes you poor, not rich. If you want to earn 500,000, 1 million dollar, you have to wait until you're 50, 60, 70 in the traditional financial system and you probably will still be broke. And you will be old. This is not a sexy combination as you can imagine. But the question is, how can you start in crypto and make these profits? Where to invest? Where to start? My name is Gunnar and I'm from Germany as you can hear and things are a little bit different in Germany. More about that later on. The fact is, there are lots of different cryptocurrencies. It's a gigantic universe where beginners and professionals get easily lost. But there is light at the end of the tunnel. There are seven key steps you need to follow to become successful in this market. You have to know them and if you fail one of them, it's literally impossible to succeed in this market. Just an example, one of the key points is your exchange and one of the biggest are for example Binance and Coinbase. These are trusted and well established exchanges but, and this is a big but, you won't find the super profitable coins on those exchanges. The unknown super profitable coins that get gigantic profits are not traded on those kind of exchanges. They are traded on much smaller insider platforms that are barely known. And I can tell you what those super secret exchanges are and why they are so profitable. And another super important thing are the right information sources. The point is, the internet is gigantic. There are hundreds and hundreds of YouTube channels, blogs, pages and much, much more. And there are also market makers and influencers. For example, Elon Musk, he is not a crypto guy. But the moment he recommended Dogecoin, it went through the roof, to the moon so to say. But why did he recommend it? Where did he hear it from? He didn't hear it from newspapers. And believe me, he is listening to someone. But you have to know who and you have to react before he is reacting. This is really, really important. And these are only two of the seven steps you have to follow in order to be successful in crypto. And if you want to know all of these steps in much more detail, and if you want to have a comprehensive checklist, Here's what you should do. There is a link below this video. Click on this link and you will get the opportunity to subscribe to my channel. Click on the link and you will see a video where I explain the next steps. So see you soon. Click on the link now. I'll see you there.